In this video, we are going to review how to admit a patient from the MST unit clerk role and what the process is. Our new trackers now are custom to what our job assignment is. So for the MST, you will notice that you have a column called admit orders. The admit orders is how we are going to know when we have to put in an admit request for the patient. What I would see here is I would see two orders populate into my admit column. For example, you would see the patient data order, as I am showing here, and the inpatient routine order that the ER doctor puts in. The only difference is if this patient was going to observation, instead of seeing this admit as inpatient routine, you would see a place in observation order. Same for psych. Up here, the patient data order would say psych routine. Once you see these two orders, you are no longer going to see if the doctor's note is signed off. That is now their responsibility. The only other thing we would want to check is if we have ER holding orders or admission orders from the hospitalist. So if we saw a yellow flag in this transfer column, like we do here on these two patients, we would know the hospitalist has already put in admitting orders. So if we had a yellow flag and our two admission orders, we could then just admit the patient. If, however, you saw you had two admit orders but did not see a transfer flag, you would click in your admit order column on the selected patient and just click anywhere in that box that would launch you to your orders. What you would do in your order screen is look for holding orders, which we know are things like a diet and a code status. I see here my patient has a regular diet and that they have a code status. That would indicate to me that the patient has ER holding orders and I could now go over to my order history tab, which is this one, and I would want to click my admission patient data order to see where the patient is going. This screen includes the same information you guys are used to seeing. It tells me the patient is going to telemetry and what their diagnosis and admitting provider is. The only important thing to know is where the patient is being placed. You no longer have to worry about their diagnosis or admitting provider. Registration will be responsible for looking at that as they have always been um, taught to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit back. This will take us back to our current orders tab and then we'll hit tracker so we can go back to our screen. The last step you would want to do before putting in your request is you would want to check if the patient requires isolation. It was very simple in this new system. You would simply click this little blue eye up near the name and this will let you know if there is any special indicator on the patient. And it will say special indicator and what we are looking for when they are in isolation is this indicator right here, MDRO. That stands for a multi-drug resistant organism. We no longer look for MRSA or VRE. The lab has categorized them all into this special indicator and this can only be added by the lab. So if we see this here, we now know that they need a private room. So we would hit back and we would then process our admit request. So I would make sure I have the highlighted patient they are registered in the ER, so we know that they can be admitted, meaning they've been registered and they're no longer in a pre-ER status. I would hit my admit button here on the right-hand side column. This will prompt you to enter this information, and it reminds you you are on the correct patient, Kess Dave, and I also can see my special indicators here in red as another reminder. So you are only going to answer the three stars at the top, request location, request reason, and your requesting location should default. Your date and time will also default, so that's why we don't even have to worry about that star at the bottom. So your request location, you're going to enter telemetry, gen med, ICU, etc. For the test phase, we're just going to enter one north, which is telemetry, um, versus the actual word telemetry. Your request reason, you can, like I said, use the little um, triangle, or you can hit F9, and you're going to choose if the patient's going to be admitted in or OBS. So we know our patient's inpatient. And then the only thing we have to do is under bed attribute right here, we are going to assign that this patient needs isolation. We could also put telemetry since we know this patient's going to telemetry, but you would already be covered that by the request location. The only other important thing to note is either request comment or notes can be used if you have special requests, for example, a patient that does not require isolation but would like a private room, you would be able to put 
patient would like a private room if possible, etc. These are just things registration can see. You would hit save and it would then file your request for you and your tracker would now automatically update to state that the patient is pending admission as you can see here. This would now go over to the bed board and to registration and they would be able to see that the patient has a pending request and they could then process the request. We also would want to call the house supervisor to let them know that we have an admission that's coming in and once they assigned them a bed two things would happen. So first once they're admitted we would see like on this patient test EDM1 that the patient was admitted that they're going to medicine and that they're an ERHI1 because they're still being held in the ED until we get a bed assignment. Once they have a bed assigned, we will then go over to the status that says bed reserved, like we see here in EDM Rob, and they will get a bed assignment. In this case, it would say telemetry in 180 bed 2. And we would know that they now have a bed. We no longer need to page overhead or write a note. The bed assignment will come up here and it will stay. It can also be seen if they scroll on that highlighted patient down to the bottom of the details screen. You would be able to then check if the patient's bed is clean by going over to our bed board to see if the bed is cleaned, which I will show you in a minute. And from the bed board, you will also be able to transfer the patient upstairs once they have left the ED. The unit clerks upstairs can still do this as well. It just depends on who gets to it first. So what we would do is we would go to the return to and we would go to our main menu, which is right here. The main menu, we would click bed management and this would launch us to our bed board. On here, we would look, so for example, I can see 180, um, Tess Rob is in there, which is our patient that pulled because they got assigned that bed. Had the bed been dirty, I would see it highlighted in this yellow color that said dirty. Once it's clean, we would see it in white. And once it's assigned to our patient, we would see the patient in that room. So we can see here EDM Rob and Tess Rob. Those were the patients we looked at before. And now either the nurse or us could hit transport and this would put in a transport request for the patient. In this case, we're just going to cancel. We're not going to put it in because it's someone else's patient. And if we were transferring the patient upstairs, we would click the patient on our board and we would have an ED hold column. Right now we don't because we don't have anyone in the hold status. And we would click transfer. On here, it will allow you to transfer your patient. The screen look exactly like they do now in the old system, and you would make sure you have the right patient. And like I said before, our patient doesn't show up because we're in the practice ring. And on here, we would just enter N for now because it's gonna be the transfer date and time. And it would default on this side that they were in the ED and that where they were going. So we would pick our bed 180, bed one, and where they were going for their transfer. And then transfer reason is not required, but on here we would put level of care or we could put that they're in admission, that kind of thing. So we would then hit save. I'm going to hit cancel because like I said, we're in the test ring and this is someone else's patient. The other thing you could do from here is if this patient had been in hold in the e emergency room and now they were being discharged from the ER and never went upstairs, we could also hit discharge and on here, and I'm going to click a different patient just because that one has a ton of stuff we don't want right now. I could hit discharge and I would see only this screen. So discharge date and time with the discharge disposition. Same screen as you guys are used to seeing now, it's just a different view. But on the disposition, I would just say whether they went home, they got transferred to a different hospital, etc. And I would hit save and that would discharge them out of the inpatient system. Then we would just have to do our regular ED discharge, meaning the nurse would print the packet and go in and depart the patient from the ED tracker. Those are the simple features of this system. 
And one last thing to show is if we wanted to see where our bed request status went and to verify it had gone in, we could see that our tracker before said that they were pending admission, but we could also go to home. And on here, we can click the work list that says better request. And we can see all the better requests that have been entered for those patients. This will be a nice feature when there's a lot of holds in the emergency room. You can go through and through and click the ones that say ER Griffin, ER Holds, and you can actually hit print list at the bottom here and it'll give you a list of only the ER patients that are being held. It's a much cleaner way to keep your list up to date and to just see it. And if you don't want to print it, you always can come back and forth to this bed board and see where the request status is and if they have an assigned bed, etc.